Today we take delivery of our newest vehicle and start modding it right away. Let's get into it. I heard Becky's got a new car. Yeah, it's gonna be here any second. A new is. car, huh? I don't know. It'll either be some clapped out kit car or some like mullet mobile. You mean a white BMW? Dude, IROC Z. IROC Z? Camaro? No, I don't see oh, oh, There it is. Hey, hey. is that us? That's a proper truck. Nice. Oh, hey. TRD package 2022. Not quite. Not the right spec, but <laughs> we'll this take thing it. is really nice. Check out the interior. Feels way more substantial than the Ranger. Hey, 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 hey. Be nice to the Ranger. What do we think, Ricky? It's this pretty is nice. Big, very spacious. Oh, dude, look at the leg room back here. Look at the infotainment system. Holy crap. Oh, yeah. It looks yeah, like a truck buddy. you can pull a bunch of cars with. Now you can put the whole crew up in this yeah, thing. Yeah, four by. Great, is it a four by four? Yeah, four, four by four, too. Yeah. We can take our wheel in it. We got the four by controllers here. Oh, it's got trailer brakes too. Hell yeah. This Things all set up, huh? Yeah, this is sick. Jeez. Big monitor. Mics on both sides. SOS, what happens if I press that? Uh, don't, don't press that, Ricky. No? Please don't press that. Why? Holy cow, this you have heaps of legroom in here. Dude, dude. I have so much legroom back yeah, here. Yeah, sick. Dude. That's good. All right, so one of the real reasons why we wanted to get this truck, the Ranger has been awesome. It's actually done a really nice job towing, but it is a light duty truck. And we noticed that when we have a lot of stuff on a trailer, it's a little bit sketchy to drive. So we decided to get this 2022 Toyota Tundra. It's four wheel drive. This thing's really nice. It's not overly spec'd out, kind of basic, but that's all we need as a really efficient work truck for us. And the bed's already lined too, which is nice. You see a lot of people commenting about the Ranger bed that's not done yet. This is all lined up and drives great. Drives really good. Drives like a truck. So what's that's next? good. I think we, we need to do some upgrades. You guys know all those parts that have been showing up for here? Yeah. That's for this. So we got a Ooh. set of massive wheels and tires from Fuel. We've got some 37s. Uh, and we got a lift kit as well. So. Bro, I saw the 37s, I thought they were for the Ranger. I'm like, yo, how are we gonna fit that there, bro? Makes sure. sense. Let's get started, dude. Let's get this thing inside. We've got our Tundra up on the rack and we're gonna start working on this, but let's go over some of the parts we have first. Of all, we have a ready lift. This is a three inch lift kit. It's quite a comprehensive kit. We do have upper control arms here. We have spring spacers. We have diff mounts. This is for the front differential. Just keep everything lined up. Very excited to install it. Ready lift always makes really good stuff and their instruction manuals are beautiful. Very easy kit to install typically when we do Rangers and when we do the Broncos. Yep. We absolutely love them. So this thing is gonna change the look of this truck quite a bit, including our wheel and tire package with Ricky has over here. Yeah, over here we have some 17 by eight and a half fuel slayer wheels. They're bronze in color as you can see. And we have some 37 inch tire for this bad boy. And don't forget guys, if you guys are looking for wheels for your truck, car, whatever it is, we offer thousands of wheels on the throttle website so head over there pick up some new wheels for your truck or sports car we have sport wheels we have off-road wheels we have all sorts of everything you want So we are gonna be starting on the back. I don't know why, I just like to start on the back. We gotta figure out what we need to do actually because we gotta drop the pan hard bar. We actually have to tilt the axle, the whole live axle down away from the frame to get our springs out. So I don't know what that's gonna look like. We're gonna open up our booklet, take a look and start making moves. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the Throttle YouTube channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss an episode. So I'm removing the panhard bar right now, and then we're gonna start cracking. You can actually crack the lower control arm okay. bolts if you want, Ricky. Uh, just get them loose, don't take them off. And then the shock bolts as well, the lower shock bolts down here, loosen them up. So when we take the bushing off of the shock, the pretty much the top half of the shock is gonna look like that. So there's actually a spacer for that. So we're gonna thread this on top of that, put our little uh, lock guys down there, put that back up there with a the new bushing on here, 
tighten it down, boom. We're gonna take a quick break from the Tundra to let you know about today's video sponsor, which is Manscaped, the premium brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped obsessively engineered the next generation of groin and body trimmers. I'm excited to be one of the first to try out the Lawnmower 4.0, the waterproof cordless trimmer, and I'm blown away by the performance. The Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer has these advanced ceramic blades with skin safe technology. This helps reduce nicks and cuts and can be easily replaced with a fresh blade so you can groom with confidence. Now let me show you about the Ultra Smooth Package. If you're looking to go smoother, you're in luck. With feedback from millions of customers around the globe, Manscaped obsessively designed a new generation of groin grooming solutions for men looking to be bold and go bald in 2022. Step one, the Crop Exfoliator. Step two, the Crop Gel. And finally, step three, get close and comfortable with the all new Crop Shaver. This perfectly engineered groin shaver has three positions blades. The Ultra Smooth package also has five replacement blades for your crop shaver and a convenient storage case for easy travel. Join over 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use promo code THROTTLE at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. That's it guys, now let's get back to the Tundra. We got our shocks installed, reinstalled, well most of the way reinstalled. We gotta put the yeah. top bushing back on and bolt it back down. But moving on, we got the springs out. That's the driver's side spring. Is the pesticide spring. We're gonna be dropping our spacer plates on. Oh yeah. Boom. That's kinda like a loud drop. Jeez. Jeez. Freaking everything on the table is It's ready to lift. <laughs> okay. So let's slam these back in the car and then we can start assembling the rear end finally for the last time. So Ricky just finished up getting our sway bar back on. I have to install this, which is a brake line bracket. So the main line for the brakes is actually back up here and it kind of hangs down. And so what you don't want to do is be pulling lines. So we're going to install this. So this is going to move our bracket that holds the brake lines from here. It's going to bring it down to about there, giving the uh, rubber line some good flex to it. So we're going to get this in and we'll be wrapped up with the back end. Our ready left is fully installed in the back. And now the question is, is do we put the 37s on the back and the stock ones in the front and put it on the ground? No. No? No, we can't do that. I think it'd be funny. It'd be, <laughs> okay, so we're- stink bug? Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, the drag look. Now that we're done with that, we're gonna move on to the front. Why are you always using Power tools and Quinn's over here using man tools. What's whoa, the deal? Using man whoa, tools. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why, why would you say man tools? You're using man tools. Versus smart. So this it's is smart, difference. that's not smart? This is called experience. Oh. That's called experience. Yes. Whoa. That's called you take a bolt off and it snaps and you don't know it snaps until it's three full rotations too late. Oh. And then you throw it away and put another one on. Yeah, so when it snaps off inside the frame or the ball joint snaps in half or. Oh. It won't or snap. The exhaust snaps Ow. on the catalytic converter, or I'm getting AC compensation. You know, you snap face. an exhaust manifold on the RB, taking it off. Who did and that? Then, not that. Not me. Ricky finished disassembling our passenger side. He's got the controller mount, he's got the shock out, I've got the shock and strut out on my side. However, there's something in the way here blocking my bolt from coming out. So for those of you guys who don't know, this entire control arm from this side to this side, that that is all the same bolt. So the bolt's like this freaking long. So what we have to do is disassemble something inside of the hood to be able to get this bolt out. Once it's out, we'll pull the control arm out, 
and then we'll start putting our ready lift stuff in. So let's bring the truck down, Ricky. You ready? Yeah. All right, let's go, baby. Yeah, it's used. Uh, we're gonna send this thing to Toyota, and they gotta reprogram it so they can take so the fire. So they don't. So <laughs> no they don't. <laughs> we just had to. So this is the ECU. He was right about that part. We had to move the airbox and actually unplug and move the ECU to get our control and bolt out. Which we should have plenty of room now because the ECU is laying on the frame. Actually, so yeah, you don't have to remove it. Yeah, I'm just yeah, gonna leave it like that. Now. Can you reach in there? Grab it. Let's get our baser bracket and installed on our shocks and then we'll put the shocks back in and we can put our new control arm in. So right now we're putting our upper spacer on for the front, which is what this guy is. We got some new hardware to go along with it. So we're gonna get these tightened down. We're gonna wrestle these things back into uh, the suspension. After we get those on, then we'll get our new upper control arms, which are these guys on with our shiny new ball guns. Looking good for tubular arms over the uh, stamp steel arms that come with the car from factory. And then we got a couple of diff mounts and stuff we gotta add, a couple of brake line brackets. Then we get to put our new fuel wheels on, get this thing back on the ground. So let's keep jamming. Boom! This is the upper A arm. This is the long ball that has to go in there. That's the long that ball? Bolt. With the big old washer. Ready? We just got our ready lift upper control arms set up. So these are a tubular arm compared to the stock uh, stamped steel arm. So this does change some of the suspension alignment stuff that you need to change with the lift kit. Keeps the camber and caster and all that good stuff in orientation. So from here, we're gonna reconnect the spindle. We have a couple of brake line um, extension plates that we need to install yep. and that'll keep the brake lines from stretching under full droop like this and just kind of give a little bit more relief. We have some sway bar spacers down here that are gonna space everything out a little bit as far as the end Link goes so we don't make contact with the tie rods and all that stuff and then we can start moving into our diff braces which i probably wish it was really cool so we got a lot of stuff to do we got to put this back together and then we'll start working on the other side let's do it We got the wheel wells all tied back up. Everything is bolted back down. One of the last things we need to do is install these. These are our diff mounts, and I believe these rotate uh, the diff a little bit lower, so it puts a little bit less strain on the axles. Our diff mounts are back on. So this is pretty much did exactly what I thought it was gonna do, which is roll the diff forward and down. So that puts a lot less stress on the axles now that we have a lift kit on here and the control arms are hanging lower. So we gotta put the ECU back on the air box, which is stuff we had to take out to get to the upper control arm on the driver's side. We're gonna put that stuff back on and we're gonna put our new fuel wheels on. Which Ricky's already Let's go! We... They may be a bit too big. We just won't be able to turn on them. <laughs> <laughs> Drive straight home. That's it. Moment of truth. Oh. It's not rubbing. The rear's good. How's the front, Quinn? Uh, I don't know, man. We're actually okay. Oh, it's still it's still a little, it hasn't settled yet because we haven't really driven it, but. I don't think when right. you turn though, 
I think, I think hop in and turn the wheel real quick. Let's see. I think it's it starting to get close to lock. I think it might. How does it feel up there, Ricky? This is cool. It's a lot higher than before. That's, yeah, it's massive. This is sick, dude. So because it's so close, I'm gonna pull the mud flap off. I'm gonna have Ricky. Ricky, go all the way left. 90% of it hitting is this little mud flap. All right, go. Dude, it's it's fine. It barely touches. Come back. Go. Go. It's literally just a liner. Let me see this Tundra. Dang, dude. This looks sick. Oh hey, my god, this thing is tall. Hey, <laughs> need, we need some side steps, dude. Ricky, Ricky couldn't even get in. Will, Will is not going to be able to drive this. This feels Dang. huge, huh? Holy crap. This thing's like a monster truck. This is the biggest truck we've done, right? So we're going to drive around the parking lot for a minute. We took both of the front liners off. Not the liners, but the, the mud flap thing. And it seems to not be hitting anything other than the fender liners. So we're going to go around, make sure nothing else is hitting and then make our adjustments from there and then go drive it. Yeah? Yeah! It might be a little bit too big. 37s might have been too big, Ricky. Dude, yeah. We might, we might need to I like can feel that. it on the steering wheel rubbing, so I know it's a lot. And this, this is only going straight and turning here. We're not even hitting dips or speed bumps or anything. Yeah. We might end up going down to a 35 yeah. with this. I don't want to so, lose the look though. I know, it looks yeah. so sick it though. It looks so freaking cool. But for the purpose of this thing driving like a freaking maniac and driving freaking perfect, when we may have to go down to 35. Man, does this thing look good on 37s though, huh? That's it, we tried what we could. It's still rubbing, so we just placed an order for some 35s. As soon as they get in here, we'll swap them out. We'll see how they do. So they rolled the liner up and figured out it was still hitting on the rail. On the right. rail. The actual frame so is right behind it, so we don't want to cut that. nothing we can do to make that fit, aside from the different wheels. It sucks, though, because it looks so. so cool. It does, yeah. I love the 37 look. So we're going to put some 35s on it. Hopefully, it should look very similar. We're taking the 37s off. Unfortunately, they don't fit, and we're putting the stock ones back on. And just looking at it, dude, it looks so ridiculous. It looks <laughs> we have the stock wheels back on. Our fuel wheels are loaded up with our 37s. We'll see you guys in a minute. A little longer than a few minutes later. Our 35s just got here. They are mounted up on our fuel wheels. Are you ready, Ricky? Yeah. This, this truck is on the ground. You don't have to lift them up that high. Oh. So let's, let's get, get the back first. Let's get, I get the back done. We got Will running the jack. Let's go. Look at that form. Do you see this form? You better get that. Come on, my back is hurting. Do it. Oh. After seeing it on 37s, back to stock, and then to 35s, it's not like a huge noticeable difference. It is a little bit smaller, but what I like about it is it still has the same appearance. The big high up frame and the big meaty tires, still a good look. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. We got our Tundra all set up, dialed in with a Ready Lift three inch lift kit, a set of Fuel Slayer wheels, and some beautiful looking 35 inch tires. Totally transformed the look of this truck. It doesn't look that much like a lift truck. It totally took on a pre-runner look, which I really it like. It looks like it fits great. The 37s look kind of like overly done. The 37s so look The 35s really are actually perfect. But right? the 35s are actually a practical setup for this truck. So let me know in the comments what you guys think we should do next to this thing. Should we change some of the coloring on some of the things? We're we gonna wrap this 
this thing a lot. I don't know about rap, but we can, yeah. we can do some stuff in the front end. I like the way there's it looks. A lot of, there's a lot of opportunity left for these True. trucks. Maybe a crumb to leave would be nice. I don't think anyone's really explored this platform yet, so there's a lot True. of fun stuff we could do. I think it's ready to be used as a good truck and start towing some of the race cars around that we have oh, laying yeah. around here and start hitting some track events. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. Quinn to hold it. Come here, Quinny. Take your f***ing wheel. Why can't you hold it yourself, Ricky? I'm short and skinny and weak. Why don't you get off the chair? Want to, he doesn't want to stand up. He doesn't want to stand up. Thank you, bro. My man's sitting down and he's sweating. I will knock that mustache clean off your face. <laughs> hey! <laughs> to Haru Pepe. Ah! <laughs> Pepe? <laughs> That's his name.